Life promises. I, Paul, do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Philippians chapter 3, verses 13 and 14. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. One thing. Paul was the greatest leader in the history of the church, but he wasn't cocky. He knew he was still a work in progress. His days were filled with starting churches, managing leaders, and taking the gospel to everyone in the known world. But he reduced his job description to one thing, or in management terms, the rigorous commitment to a singular objective that has two parts, not dwelling on the past, but reaching ahead to achieve the vision of the future. The past can bog us down in different ways. Some of us feel ashamed by failures in our personal lives or in business, and every decision we make is colored by the fear that we'll make the same mistake again. Others of us live in past glories. We've enjoyed stunning success, but instead of using our gains as a foundation for future growth, we keep reliving those memories. Living in the past, whether failed or successful, takes our lives out of focus. Paul says, forget the past and move on, and he encourages us to uncover and embrace a God-sized cause, one that has a positive impact on people and expands His kingdom. What are some past failures or successes you need to leave behind? Is there a God-sized cause that has gripped your heart? Life Promises The Lord answered and said, Write the vision and make it plain on tablets, that he may run who reads it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it will speak, and it will not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it. Habakkuk chapter 2, verses 2 and 3. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23. Let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Write it down. Some of us wander from one thing to another our whole lives. We're capable of so much more, but we have never clarified our purpose in life. An out-of-focus purpose can't inspire us, but a crystal-clear lens on God's purpose for us rivets our attention and gives us energy to keep going until we reach our goals. While the prophet Habakkuk was in prayer, God told him to write down the vision he was giving him. We need to write our vision down in clear, compelling language so that it grips our hearts. A clearly written vision statement frees us from confusion so that we can run instead of wander, stumble, or go backward. A clear vision overcomes inertia, and produces the inspiration to run toward our goals. But the fulfillment of our vision is in His timing, not ours. Seldom does anyone move in a straight line from the conception of a dream to its fulfillment. Far more often, we experience ups and downs, delays and disappointments. These, though, won't stop us if we keep our eyes on our purpose and on the One who has given it to us. Do you have a clear, compelling vision statement? What would it or does it mean to you to have one?